In this video, I want to talk about in in in, which is a very fast and very lightweight terminal file browser. So this is what it looks like. Relatively simple. If you watch my videos, you probably know I usually use this program called Ranger. Ranger is a file browser. It is much uh, some of you guys would call it bloated. It is much more full-featured than InNN. InNN strives to be very small, minimal, highly usable. The thing about Ranger, though, is, well, one of the things about Ranger is that it is written in Python. Now, Python, if you don't know, is the absolute slowest language that, for whatever reason, people still write programs in. Now, I, well, I know why people write programs in it. It's intuitive. It's basically just pseudocode. But Ranger runs significantly slower than you want it to. Now, let me show you just startup time. If I open a window with an open Ranger in it, you'll notice that there is a couple of milliseconds break. Now that, or I guess pause there. Now that's not huge, but it adds up when you're doing other things in the file browser. Now, in and in just starts up immediately. There is no loading time in and in for anything. It just it all happens instantaneously, uh, which is really fantastic. Ranger, on the other hand, they, again, they have all these nice previews and stuff, but everything runs so slow, it's non-responsive. If you do anything in, too intensive in Ranger, it'll do it, but it'll just lag around and stuff like that. So although I still use Ranger, I wanted to showcase in and in just because I think there are a lot of people who could who would find it better for their use case. So let's go into it. Let me make this thing a little bit bigger and I will turn on screen keys so you can see what I'm pressing. Now, by default, of course, you can have, you, you can, if you really want, use arrow keys to navigate, but why would you do that when you can use Vim keys? So J, K to, uh, J to go down, K to go up, H to go to the previous upper directory and L to go into another, or whatever directory is selected. And you can also use L to open files. So for example, if I open this file, there it is. It actually, by default, it's gonna open files in XDG open. So whatever your default image browser is, is it's gonna open them like that. Now, uh, so some basic uh, movement and stuff like that. Well, I guess in addition to opening things with L, if you go over a text file, so this is a text file, you can press E to edit it in whatever your editor is, and you can press uh, P to open it in a pager. If you just sort of want to see the contents of it, you can open it with P. So relatively simple. Again, L to just run XDG open on them, E to edit, P for pager. Pretty rememberable. So let's say I want to copy some files. Now I have, um, I have this file, npc.xcf, and I'm gonna press space on it. Now, if I press space on it, you'll see that there's this little thing. It just shows the file name down here. Let's say I wanna copy this to my downloads directory. I'm gonna go in here. Now to, well, let's do moving first. If I'm gonna actually copy this in here or totally move the file, you press capital V. And capital V will sort of paste out or will actually move the file that you've selected. So if we go back here, we'll now see that this file is gone. Now, let's say I wanna copy a file. So to copy a file, I'll press space, same thing on the file void, and I'm gonna to go to downloads and to copy it in, you press P. Now those might not be easy to remember, capital V for move and capital P for copy, but then I, well, at least that's what I originally thought. But when you think about it, there's a V in move and a P in copy in the middle. I think that's the intended mnemonic. So that's what you can use. And if you also want to delete a file, um, I can, for example, you know, press space on this or, and then press capital X, and then that will, you know, delete it or something like that. Now, in addition to co copying things with paste or copying things with space, you can also just press capital Y and you'll see that it says selection on in the bottom left. And I can go, let's say I started from this file and I went to this file and I can press capital Y again and then that will, you know, select all these files. Um, I actually don't know why I did it again. All right, but anyway, so now that that's done, I can press Y, that is lowercase Y, and it'll show you the files that you've selected. So I can go, let's go to downloads and I will, you know, move all these files in. So they all appear. So this is sort of like DD and PP on Ranger. Um, it's a relatively simple way of moving things around. So that's how you do it. So again, um, what, capital Y is actually select them and then you go through how many files you want and press capital Y again, and then press capital V or whatever to, to move them wherever. 
Now, I haven't mentioned it, but there is one thing that's a little... Actually, no, I'll talk about that in a second. But um, So more information... So if you want to search... Let's say I want to go to my website's uh, directory on my computer. That's I can press the search function, and I will find whatever directory that it is hosted in and I can press you know the slash for search and I will get there pretty easily. Another thing you can do, let's say you know, actually go back to my home directory. Another nice little option they have is if you press control I that will activate just uh, you can just type whatever and it will automatically go to that directory. So if I just type repos or rep it goes straight to repos. If I start website, it'll go straight there. If I go to blog, it'll go to my blog folder, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And disable that function with capital I again. And so it's relatively simple. Um, now, in addition to that, let's say other functions that are nice. So, I, oh, I don't think I mentioned before, but let's go to my downloads folder. Let's say I want to rename a file. If you want to rename a file, it's Control R, and it'll give you a little prompt here. So I'm just going to tack on some stuff onto that. Or another thing you can do is you can actually rename all. Now, if you just type, wait, is it capital R or lowercase r? I don't remember. Actually, if you press question mark, if you forget anything, you can just press question mark and it'll give you this little thing here. So to rename, oh, okay, okay, yeah. So to rename everything, you can just type r in a directory. Now, what that does specifically is it runs a program called vidir which you do need to have installed but what that does is it gives you a list of all the files in this directory and allows you to rename them so if i want to rename you know let's say i want to rename this one you know words blah 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 and i want to rename this one i will save that and you'll see that now these files have their file names have changed so that is very nice so you can do that as well now anyway so one complication i haven't mentioned this yet you might be thinking, how can I customize NNN for my liking? Now, the thing about NNN is that it doesn't use a config file, but it's also not necessarily like one of the suckless utilities that you're expected to make changes to the source files and then recompile it every time. So what NNN does, which is maybe a little weird, let me get rid of that um, stuff there, but what NNN does is that it actually uses environmental variables. So you'll see here, this is my profile file, and I've set a couple variables here, and instead of having a config file, NNN uses this. That is, it has certain settings. You can check the manual for this if you want to. Uh, manual NNN, that's what I meant. You can check the manual for this. It lists out some of the settings that you can set at the bottom, um, but they determine different things that NNN is going to do. For example, I can set bookmarks. I'll show you how those work in a second. I can select, uh, so one thing I think I mentioned before is, you know, to open things in, you know, your editor by default, you have to press E, but if you set use editor to one, if you press L, it'll automatically open a text file in it. So that's another setting. You can also set custom scripts. You can set, uh, I have a custom copying command. If I want to copy something to my clipboard, other stuff like that. Let me show you how these bookmarks work. They're relatively simple. So if you read this, what this basically says is I've set my home directory to be H, my documents directory to be D, my downloads to be capital D, and my wallpapers directory to be W. What this means is, uh, you know, I'm in my downloads folder right now. I can press... Uh, the leader key, which happens to be the Grav accent. So I'm going to press that and then H and I will go to my home directory or that and D and I'll go to my uh, downloads folder or that and then W and I'll go to my wallpaper folder. So that is a nice little way to move around. Now notice also, speaking of the leader key, notice also that there are these numbers up here. These are just sort of different tabs you have or they have some other name for them, but they're basically tabs. So I am in number one right now, but I can go to, let's say I go to number two, I can press leader and then two to go there. So I, and then I can go, let's say, I don't know, I'll go to some other directory and then I can go back to leader one or the, the first tab and I'm still in that directory I was before. So that's how you can sort of do things between different folders or whatever. Um, anyway, so I mentioned you can put custom scripts in, scripts in here. Now I've created a little script just to showcase that this does in fact work. And I made a little script called make wall. And this is just to make a selected file my wallpaper. All it does is sets it as my wallpaper. 
this is config specific. It moves it to my wallpaper location. And then it also gives a little update that says the wallpapers have been updated. So let's use this. Now how you do this by default, again, you can check question mark if you need to know, but once you set a script, you can run it with capital R. So that's what we're gonna do. So let's say I'm in, you know, I'm looking in my, um, get rid of these, go to my landscape folder. I'm gonna, oops, yeah. So I'll, I'll open and play around with one of these. I don't know, let's see, which one do I wanna set as my wallpaper? I don't know, well, maybe this one. I don't know, it's winter time. So what I can do is just press capital R and that will set it, it'll run the script on it and you'll see it's now my background and stuff like that. And I even got the little notification on it. So that's a little thing you can do. Uh, you can add scripts to it. And I, th I think you can add multiple scripts as well. You can check the manual for it, but um, yeah, just do that. Now I think uh, that's basically all I wanted to cover in this video. Uh, that's pretty much, I'm trying to think if there's anything. I, I think that's pretty much, that'll give you a general view of the kind of stuff you can do. Check the manual if you wanna know more, or I think it is in the Arch default repo, so you can pretty much just install it there. Um, but the source code is up on GitHub, you can see it. If you really want, you can make, if you want more customizability, you can just go to the source code and I think most of the key bindings are in in and in dot H and then recompile it if you really want. But uh, so anyway, hopefully if, for those of you, I'm sure there are a lot of people who are like Rangers bloat and so I might actually use this, but I myself, I'm still mostly using Ranger, but every once in a while I'll do something in here. So. Anyway, hope you learned something, and I will see you guys next time.